Today I'm going to show you how to build this red line flag with the custom logo step by step. Stay tuned towards the end of the video where I will give you details how you can enter in for the free flag giveaway. For today's project, we are working with 1x2s. You will need seven eight foot 1x2s. This is select lumber. It is exactly one and a half inches wide and three quarters inch deep. So our build is going to be 37 by 19 and a half. That's exactly what this will come out to. Now, if you're using common lumber, you can do that, but it will change your dimensions a little bit. And for those that don't know the difference, I have a piece here. Common lumber is cheaper than select lumber. It's a great build for flags. It makes an awesome look. It has knots in it compared to the select, which is sanded, it's straighter. Select is not a perfect lumber. Either way, when you go to your big box store, you're gonna take these off the shelf, you're gonna put them on the ground and look for the straightest boards possible, because you will find wavy boards in both of these products. This comes down to personal preference and what you wanna use. Pro tip though, if you're using common boards, be very careful where you place the knots when you start building your flag. You do not want any knots in the union, and you do not want any knots where your logo is going to go because you're not going to be able to do an engraving. We're going to cut all the lumber down at 37 inches. You will get two stripes per 8-foot board. Once we're done with the 37-inch cuts, we're going to take some scrap pieces and cut those at 19 inches, and that'll be the back supports for the flag. Now that we're done with the cuts, we're going to give everything a quick sand with 220 grit sandpaper. This is fine on common board and this is fine on select lumber. Also after we're done torching the wood, which is not in this video, I give it another quick sand. Now we're going to torch all the wood and this is your personal preference. Have fun with it, experiment with it. You can do a light burn, a medium burn, a heavy burn. You can even char the wood. Now what I'm using is burns o -Matic propane, that's the blue canister. You can use a yellow canister, which is map gas. It does burn hotter. Uh, you can even use a big propane tank that's on your grill if you have the right connection for it. So just, this is all about speed. You're going back and forth at a nice steady speed to get the burn that you want. I am closer to the wood than normal. I am getting a wind through my garage. So it's burning the torch flame a little bit, but just play with this, have fun. When you're done, so definitely give it all another sand. You want to even it back out. Now we're gonna get the boards in order so we know exactly where to mark the union. If you do not have a jig, don't worry about it. Use a piece of scrap wood, use a level, some kind of a straight board. Make sure your boards are all just even. And I'm gonna lay the stencil on, which I did get from Amazon. I will link that below. This is the exact size. We don't need to get the tape measure out for this. And just pencil mark where the union is gonna end. This is a cool little trick. So to mark the union, you're gonna take a utility blade and hammer it in on those pencil lines. This will stop bleed over from when you're doing the stain. I've tried the painter's tape in blue and green and I always end up with bleed over. If someone else has a different trick, comment below on it. But I find out that the utility blades work perfect. Now make sure you hammer them in hard enough where they stick into the wood a little bit. You'll see in a moment here, after I start hammering the other two in, the top one falls out and I have to put it in a little deeper, but it'll work perfect for your stain. Now the stain I'm using here is Minwax Semi-Transparent True Black is the color, and this is a water-based stain. This is easy cleanup. I give it two coats, even though it's not on the video. So a little trick is to take your sponge or your foam brush that I'm using, throw it in a Ziploc bag or a grocery bag, wrap it up, and you can reuse it and it will not hurt the brush. After I'm done, I wash it out with soap and water. Now I like to do all sides of the flag, so it gives it a 3D effect. That's a personal decision on how you wanna do it. 
Some people just paint the face and that's it. Now between the boards, I don't do the full three quarter thickness of the board where they touch. I just do a part of that because if a board is crooked or warped, you don't wanna see the pine and that little trick will hide it. Now when I get to the red, which is an add-in piece here because I already had it done, I'm also using Minwax. Same thing, it's semi-transparent. It's a clear tint base that I had tinted to crimson. I give all these boards two coats. The black I have an issue with where I coat it and wipe it off and it looks brown. I've done that four times. So what I do now is I just put the black on, I feather it out, I let it dry, and I put a second coat of black on. If someone has a tip for that, please comment below. Okay, now we're prepared to assemble the flag together. So you're gonna to wanna to flip every board over. I'm doing it slow, we'll get into the time lapse. So make sure you do this carefully and you flip all the boards in the correct direction. Now I'm gonna flip all the boards on their edge and then we're gonna add wood glue to it. Now that we have it all glued up, we're getting ready to clamp it. So you just seen I put an extra board on top. You do not want to clamp directly onto your flag. So right now these are pressure clamps that are going to go down. You don't have to use this system. It's what I have. Look at my first video of the protectors. I literally put dumbbells on the back of the flag. I didn't want to pull the jig out. But the top board that I just put on is going to protect from the metal clamps that are coming soon. You have those extra cutoffs from earlier in the day. Grab some of those and put a cutoff piece in between your clamps because you do not want to clamp directly onto the woodwork. Now I'm getting ready to put on the metal clamps I was just talking about. Sorry the camera's off on a bad angle. I didn't realize that when I was filming this, but you'll see the second clamp I put on, and that's where it'll make sense why I put that extra piece of wood on so you're not clamping directly onto the flag itself. I'm trying to level the flag out right now, and I'm gonna use a rubber mallet in a second, start hammering it down. If you don't have a rubber mallet, don't go run out and buy one. Just take a piece of scrap wood, lay it on the back of the flag, and hit it with a regular hammer. This is where those four boards that we cut at 19 inches earlier come into play. I know I'm off camera on the first board, but you'll see the other three being put on. The board itself, like I said, is 19 inches. The flag is 19 and a half. So I like to center them and I leave a quarter inch gap on the top and the bottom. I am also adding wood glue to this. Sorry, that's off camera.
Since I use the four supports on the back of the flag, I don't wait for the glue to completely dry. I wanna flip it over and get any of the squeeze out of the glue off the face or the stain. And right here, I'm using a wet paper towel. Actually, it's a damp paper towel. It's just water and wiping it off. It'll take off the majority of it. And then what I do is I go through with the utility blade and just use the corner of the blade to get between the wood and scrape out any excess that may need to be uh, removed. Be careful not to scrape your stain or scratch the wood in any way. Now we're gonna get the stars uh, stenciled in or drawn on. I did lose the original footage, so this is a finished flag, a different one, obviously. And uh, so we're gonna tape it on. I'm gonna pretend that I'm penciling in the stars on a few of them. But I wanted to point this out. Make sure your stars are pointing up. And then when I use the tape, use the blue or the green. I think the green is less adhesive. Make sure it's not on any of the stained boards. You don't wanna go back and clean your work that you already did. Now we're gonna outline the stars and I'm using the Dremel bit 105. The Dremel I have is an old one, it's from the 80s. It's a series, I think 380. Most people are using the new Dremels 3000. I'm a big fan of using what you have. Obviously I'm using two hands because when you put that thing on the wood, it wants to take off. So what I do on the stars is I do four sides of the star first and I find it easier to just do a straight line. And then I'll flip the flag and do the last side of the stars all at once, which you'll see in a moment here. Now, when carving out the stars, you're not actually engraving. All you're doing is just taking off the stain. So you don't need to dig deep into the star. Just take the stain layer off. The bit I am using is the 105 still. I normally use the 106. And I think about the fourth row up on the stars, I realize I'm still using the 105. And you'll see a glitch in the film. That's me swapping out to the 106 Rummel bit. Yes, I lost the original footage once again. Apologies for that, but I wanted to show you how I get the stencil onto the flag. So I always like to center it out between the union as you just see me measure it out and the end of the flag for where my stencil's gonna go. Or in this case, it's not a stencil, but my drawing. And we're gonna trace it on using carbon paper, which you'll see in a second. Now I use Microsoft Print to get the image. It takes me two or three times to print it out to get to the right size that I need. If someone is more familiar with that program, uh, please comment. Maybe there's an easier way to figure it out instead of printing it three times. It'll also print it on two or three sheets of paper depending on what size your logo is. So then I just cut the paper, you reline it up, and I just take clear scotch tape and tape it back together. Now once again, you've seen that I just taped onto the non-stained boards. Now with the carbon paper, definitely make sure that the shiny side is down. Uh, also, make sure that your hands are not sweaty or wet because you will imprint through the paper onto the flag. Uh, someone gave me a tip, and I haven't tried it yet, but I will in the future. They said take tissue paper, put it on the flag first, then the carbon paper, then the drawing. And I'm just going to sample draw just this section here, and then we'll jump into the carving of the flag in a moment. 
So now I'm gonna start outlining the logo and I'm using the same Dremel bit as earlier for the stars. It's a 105 tip. When I go to carve out the rest of the flag, I'll switch between a 105, 106, and 108, depending on the spot of the logo. And one thing I wanted to point out here is after I'm done with the whole outline of the project, I do burn where it says fire and department again, lightly before I carve it out. And that will make it actually pop. This is obviously the back of the flag. I already took it outside, retorched it. I also torched the stars and I gave this a coat with polycrylic. So I'm gonna put the picture wire on now and what I'm using, it'll be in the description below. This is from Amazon, even the eye hooks. Uh, the flag itself weighs about 12 pounds, give or take. And the picture wire I'm using is rated for 30 pounds. Now I want to make sure that the flag is clean before we put the clear coat on it. So I'm obviously using rubbing alcohol. You can use mineral spirits. You can even use a damp rag with water on it. Just make sure whatever you're using, it dries thoroughly before you put your clear coat on. Okay, now we're going to give it some clear coat and I'm using Minwax Polycrylic on it. It is a water-based product, which is really easy to clean up with and it doesn't have the same odor as polyurethane. Uh, it's fall by me, so I normally try to do the clear coat outside and I use a spray can, but it's too windy for that. I'm going to do this indoors, so that's why I go with the polycrylic, especially because of the low odor. And I also give this two coats of polycrylic. It takes about two or three hours to dry, which is a bonus compared to polyurethane. And I do sand between each coat. That was a fun build. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please comment below. But now it's time to talk about the flag giveaway. I want to do different giveaways throughout the year. 
but there's always going to be a minimum goal. This one is December 1st by midnight. We need to grow this channel to a thousand subscribers and that's why I need your help. Tell your friends, your family, your coworkers, everyone to subscribe. We hit the thousand mark on December 1st by midnight. We do the flag giveaway to enter very simple on this video and this video only type in flag giveaway. You're automatically entered. It's one entry per person, December 2nd or 3rd. We will throw all the names into a computer program, which will randomly pick the winner and we'll do it on the video. This is going to be for the U S only domestic lower 48. Sorry, Hawaii. Sorry, Alaska. And being, we built a red line flag today. I find it suiting that we give a red line flag away. Now, even if you're not on the department, I guarantee somebody in your family is your neighbor is we're hitting the holiday seasons. So this would be a great gift for somebody. December 1st, midnight, a thousand subscribers to do this. Enter on this video only. Uh, flag giveaway and I'll even up the ante if we can get up to 5,000 subscribers I will give two flags away and we'll have two winners get out there and get everyone to subscribe that you can if you're not subscribed and you're watching this please do smash that like button stay tuned for a few more seconds of a close-up of the flag